My name is James. Hi, James. I am a telepath from the colony. Welcome to the group. Uh, finally, we speak to you directly. Did you speak to you? Did I speak to you before? No, you spoke to Randall. Randall. Thank you for coming through. Uh, tell me what you learned. What's the most important thing you can, you know, have only a few minutes, but whatever you can, you can teach. I mean, you are recorded and you will go on YouTube. Oh. If you don't mind. Um, I can stop the recording if you like, whatever. It matters not. Okay. Um, I'm becoming acclimated to this mm -hmm. procedure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the most important thing I would say about the human colonies is that we're learning who we are dealing with. Mm -hmm. We're learning what we are dealing with. Mm -hmm. And how advanced they are, and that they are allies and not foes. Mm -hmm. So, my interaction with these two mm -hmm. was difficult I because see. we have different kinds of telepathy. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have human telepathy, and he has Yu-Yo telepathy. We were able to speak, but it was challenging okay so just as it is being here is sort of challenge do you have trust in them now yes i trust them they tr they estimated my trust level at 93 percent okay which is high okay there we at being human have always a little bit of doubt no matter what how are the Pleiadians? Can you, can you, you know, how are, are, you, are they friends? Yes, they are friends. They seem to be condescending. Is it your feeling? It is just their way. Mm -hmm. It's just the way they are. Are they nice? I wouldn't call them nice. Are they committed to help? They're committed to help, yes. They're very blunt. Mm -hmm. But yet I've learned to be very blunt in return. Uh huh. Because if you are not, they're insulted that you are not being totally honest with them. Very good. Mm. So they prefer you be almost hostile with them. So ah. It's like, so come on, tell me what you want. So, wow. And they respect that. But it's not in an angry way. Uh -huh. mm. They just want you to be totally clear, not vague and not wishy-washy. How about Lyrans? How many Lyrans involved? I know Tukur, mm -hmm. and she has some associates. There uh -huh. are like seven Lyrans. Do you like them? Uh, the Lyrans are quite beautiful people, actually. Are they? Do they look sexy in any way? Um, not to me. Okay. <laughs> not to me. Mm -hmm. She looks like a big Kitty cat, at least. Uh -huh. in some ways, uh -huh. not really, but that's the closest you can okay. get. So are they allies with the Earth? Would they help? Oh yes, the the Lyrans are actually one of the most sympathetic. Uh huh. For I have no idea why, but they seem to be the most caring, and they do have. It's difficult for them to talk to Pleiadians because they are, even though their voices are deep, they're very, they're not real harsh at times. So. Star Trek is a nice reference point. What is different from Star Trek over there? Star Trek. Yeah. Oh, yes. I, I really never watched it very much. Oh, so it's not a good reference point. But what, what new did they learn? What new did I Yeah, the science fiction. Oh, there's much science. They can, they can uh, personalize your tools, meaning that all your electronic ma machinery and equipment will only respond to you if that's what you want. I mean, you can, it, it's by, they can do it five or ten different ways. Your eyes, your voice patterns, your breath, your, you know, just your fingerprints. There's so many things, but... If I have a group of tools here, 
that I'm not allowed to use, I won't be able to use them. So the ascension and the announcements and the contact, how are they up to the to the job to, to we, do the announcements? We as humans have been asked to help them with first contact, right. yes. And being the first telepath, uh -huh. I was Randolph and I were called to uh -huh. go and talk to them about what we felt would be a responsible first contact. Well, they are they up, are they up to the job? Are they? Oh, oh, they're they're up to the task. But the problem is they do not understand humans as well as they should yet. And and mm -hmm. the other problem is that you, with the information that I gathered from them, is that the humanity is not quite ready. Just right. not. There are pockets that are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We use the word pockets mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> Pockets are ready, but not, not the whole planet. Yeah. So James, were you a person on Earth at one time? And I am. Lincoln? Yes, and I will coming back to Earth. Okay, where? What area were you from? I'm uh, from southern Canada. Okay. So is it uh, co consul with Arcturians? Is it efficient? It seems like to be counterproductive. Everything that is proposed is kind the of the Arcturians down. are very opinionated. Mm -hmm. and do not do not listen well mm -hmm. um, they are under the impression that they have all the right answers mm -hmm. but they're learning slowly that they do not mm -hmm. when they talked I talked to one Arcturian briefly mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it was really painful but um, what he gathered from me was contrary than any belief that he had of earthlings ever. Mm -hmm. So he took this back to the High Council and that has caused a, a pretty big uproar within the Arcturian mm -hmm. part. Have you met with Galactic Federation people? No, I have not. How good are their relationships in the colony? Is it up to the task? Are they working on, on the plans for the earth? How would they be helping the whole colony? They're working on the plans and I will be uh, w within those meetings several times in coming up. Are you aware of humancolony.org site? It has been mentioned at the meetings, but I have not been there. No. Have you read my book? No, I have not. That's very disappointing because I outlined very specific and detailed they plans do, for the colony. They'll give us specific information that they want us to have. They have I have, I can say that I've read portions of your book. Okay. But I have not read the whole thing. Are there colonies um, nearby or are they are only a few? They nearby? were. There was one colony on Earth at one time and it is no longer there. Okay, so anybody it was on, a, on an island on the South Pacific, which was not known because it was a new volcanic island within the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. So, how do you see ascension? Is it coming closer? How does it feel? You, because you are ascended in a way, in a way. you are. Well, in I'm not truly ascended, but um, yes, I, I understand your question, mm -hmm. and the answer to your question is it's coming about in a very erratic way. Mm -hmm. um, they want more smooth transition than what they're seeing. So What's your estimate? A, is it, would, would it take 200 years to ascend? No, it will not take 200 years. What's your estimate? Range? Um, they have not told me what that range is. but I mean, I could only predict in my own human thoughts. Mm -hmm. But I would say well, you said 200 years. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe that is fairly close. Is it fun to be telepathic? It can be. And then there are times when it's a real pain in the butt. Can you speak to Jesus? No, I haven't spoken to Jesus. Not personally. Uh, uh, do you have Yehiel around? or? I'm, I met with several Yehiel. Yes. They can channel Jesus. They can channel Jesus, but I am not.
been given that. Okay. Anybody? It's good to see the earth again, though. Oh, you're not seeing it much? Well, it's, I've been here. They have prolonged my stay. I've been here a month. Uh -huh. That's the longest anyone has ever been off planet. How does it uh, feel? Except for the one gentleman that is actually permanently off planet. How does it feel up there? It's not what? uncomfortable, but yet it's alien. Yes. I want to go there with my family and stay there. Would it be advisable? I don't know your family. In general, what is it a family-friendly place? What, what kids lose a lot? It's really quite... I'm not sure it would be family-friendly for one family. If there was a lot of families, maybe. But one family there would feel very isolated, I would think. Is it safe? It would, it's not unsafe, no. You have enough space? There's plenty of space. Can you wander into the mothership? You, I have freedom to move within 80% of the ship. Excellent. How does it feel when you go to alien parts? Do you wear a helmet? I have to have breathing apparatuses, uh -huh. yes. How does it feel? I mean, feel emotionally. They're a diligent peoples. Mm -hmm. And they are a... They are a positive people in many senses. Does it feel like human ships, cruise, cruise no, ships? No, it does not feel like that. No, not at this time. When you meet aliens in the, in the corridor, how do they behave? They are usually just nod. They what? Sorry. Usually nod. just nod. Oh, nod. And, and sometimes they will interact. Do they look scary? There are a couple species that are not good to look at, yes. Did you see insectoids there? Insectoids, yes, there's one there, yes. And I really, he is really quite hard to look at. Uh, are, Anun have you ever met Anunnaki? Anunnaki, no. Reptoids? No. Uh, how does Orion look? Does he look like a, a human? An Orion? The orange guy? Orion? No, he would be an alien, like uh, maybe Swedish. From the one from Orion. Oh. He was part of the colony. He introduced oh, yes. the, 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 uh, the yeah. police in the colony. He does. A, he looks fairly human in some way. Yeah, most ways. How His eyes he... are a little bigger. What's your impression of Orions in general? Well, this particular Orion is different from what I understand. He's they like him. More, he's more human friendly, more uh, species friendly, whereas the Orions can be hostile. Is he good? Do, he, yes, do like the, their appearance. He is a like refugee. He's, he escaped somehow from uh, the Orion uh, area. So in general, we could communicate with Orion, individual Orions, maybe. I, could, I couldn't talk very well with him. I did speak with him for a few minutes. Oh, only a few minutes. But, uh, but from what I understand from my briefings, the briefings that they give you before you go into these meetings. They tell you a little bit about everybody and they tell you a little bit about what we're going to be discussing. Give give this some thought, give that some thought, you know, that kind of thing. How is Nina? Nina is a very excellent leader. Uh-huh. So. Is she pretty? She's beautiful, yes. Uh-huh. Yes, yeah, she's a beautiful girl. Who is most accessible of aliens on the, on the, on the colony? Which species? Me. Uh, oh, well, Nina. Other than Nina. Oh, you yell. So you can get in hold a hold of you yell and uh, speak to them. Yes, if I want to speak to you yell, they will they will come. Yeah, or I'll go there. So. And children are dealing with which aliens? Children what? Children. Are, uh, with which aliens are children dealing? The first colony has lots of children, right? Right. What aliens are they talking to? They're talking to you yell. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Uh, they they don't talk to Pleiadians. They're too harsh mm -hmm. for children, but they there is a Lyran that they talk to as well. So you yell are like ba good babysitters, right? You yell no. The parents the whatever parent figure is there mm -hmm. usually takes care of their kids. But you yell are kind, are they? Yeah, they're kind. Mm -hmm. They're gentle. Yes. Gentle. They're very gentle. Can and that makes them very good with the kids because. They look a little bit like E.T., so, uh -huh. you know, um, if 
they show the movie E.T. to them first. Oh, so you're referring to that movie of, of Spielberg? Yeah, they show them the movie E.T. Uh -huh. so they won't be as frightened when they meet them. Excellent. So, What's the difference from E.T.? How are you different from E.T.? They're a little taller. Uh huh. At least this... Is the face longer? Um, they, they pretty much look um, like you would see on anything on the internet of you, you know. A gray? Yeah, the grays. With a smooth face? Yes. Oh. Do they show any miracles? Any of them can disappear at once? Oh yeah, they disappear all the time. But the, the thing is about that, it's a particular place that they disappear. It's, there's a, a spot in the room where they move from dimension to dimension or uh -huh. from time to time or whatever it is. But it's a, a location. Mm -hmm. They have to be there. So. Are they telekinetic, any of them? Uh, they have not shown me that, but I'm sure they are. Can they control minds of humans just by mind? I'm sure they could, but they don't try to. They're trying to be very open. Mm -hmm. Any other miracles you saw? I saw the, some uh, pretty interesting machinery doing some pretty interesting Have you done things. field trips to other planets? <coughs> no. <coughs> That's disappointing. Did you ask for Is this water? Yes, please yes. go ahead. Yes. They are both the same. It's difficult for me to be here. I'm sorry. Yes. But that is very helpful. That's the first Thank contact you. we have. <coughs> please come up more often. That's so helpful. So you mentioned on a ship you need different breathing apparatus. Uh, does that imply yes. that all the others don't have respiration the way we do? Do they need less oxygen or what? Um, I'm not sure what their air mass is made of, but I know that only Yigil goes without suits there. All, every other species has to wear something. Oh, are Pleiadians Not, breathe in the same air as humans? No. They also use breathing apparatus. They have something that fits into their nostrils. So oh. most all of them are breathing something else. Correct. But Nina can? Nina is adaptive. Uh -huh. um, she has adapted to a couple of different atmospheres. So becoming telepathic may, did, did make you did it make you more spiritual? Do you have more insight into our God and spirituality and spiritual it, energy? I do. Tell me more. I I see it very differently than I used to. Uh -huh. It's much more real uh -huh. than it used to be. Um, a f just a feeling, or just a an emotion, or a or a story, or a uh, thought. thought. Now it's much more interactive because you feel their spirituality when you connect with them. So. Well, your uh, what what religion were you brought in in, in Canada? I was a Catholic. How different is your view of the of God and angels at that time? No. I don't believe in Catholics anymore, <laughs> but I do believe in God much more. But the way that the Catholics view religion is so tiny, so tiny. James, how were you taken? Were you like physically? Actually, I was interviewed. Um, I was interviewed by Yu Yil, and then I was interviewed by. Uh, two Pleiadians, and it was a rough second interview, but uh, they they saw the telepathic ability in me, so. So they asked, or did they just? They asked me if I would like to, and I said, well, I had a lot of questions, so. Do you have a family? Yeah, my question too. I do have a family, but I'm separated from my wife, and um, my family lives with her. I see them now and then, but I'm I'm about uh, 40 miles away from them, so it's not not like a visit that I can do. Why the can't they the visit you up there? Wouldn't they? Well, <clears throat> why the? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Why didn't your children and wife couldn't go up there and live with you up there? Um. I don't know why they didn't ask him. I asked uh, Dee's do about them, and 
he did not even respond. So hmm. I'm interested to know why myself. So they say you can't go up, they cannot take people up unless you're above five, uh, five OG frequency, spiritual frequency. Is it about right? That's how you feel it? They can't take people up? They used to abduct Actually, any people, right? They can abduct any people in the they past. Can, they can take people under five or work. They can take people under five or work. Mm -hmm. They prefer only to take people for five or and above. However, they do make exceptions in that role. So for taking family just once, it's not a huge risk, I would say. If they abducted lots of people, they should be able to do that. You might... Uh, I think that right now they're... They're not interested in uh, taking anybody other than the people that can help them out. I understand. Holographic projections, you probably experience lots of them. Can you holographically project with equipment down there and speak to someone on Earth? I cannot, no. Oh, they didn't do that? No. Because they said they used some of the colonists to speak to people down, down below using holographic projections. It wasn't me. <laughs> How, like the communicator, do you, are you comfortable with using it? Is it a good thing? A communicator? Yeah. Um, Is it a lot of fun? Hmm. Can you browse the internet? Yes. Yeah. Can it create a, a realistic 3D figure in the room? They're forbidding me to discuss my communication devices. Oh, that's fine. They already discussed it a lot before. Thank you. They're, but they've made some adaptions. It's much more uh, fun to play with now than it was then. You mentioned a scale of five orgs or something? Yeah, we I'm discussed it before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Five org is their uh, vibration level for the people they want to visit. Okay, and how is that measured? Um, it's a Galactian measurement, and I don't know how they do it. Yeah, and does, would that apply, would, above five, does that apply to very many humans on Earth? Or no, very few. Very few. Is that the vibration level? That's the vibration level, yes. Mm -hmm. It's an org level, they call it an org level. It's your vibrational level. People in this group are in the fours, four point something levels. Uh, you have access to their databases of information? Can you Some read their... Some of it. I have, um, I have access to the things that I need access to. Mostly first contact information. Other planets, other species? Um, first contact information of other species as well. Yeah, I would recommend go out. You are in a position to, not maybe not you, but the whole colony is in a position to invite more consultants from outside, especially Sasania. Yes. Very... I have been given the leadership position in the colony as the head telepath. Mm -hmm. And so I can have some, excuse me, <clears throat> I have some privileges that they don't have. Please read my site, humancolony.org. I that, will do that. That so. is my book, book number three, and I outline all the ideas which how you're in a position to invite more help. And you, the, if you miss that opportunity to invite more help, nobody can do that for you. You humans up there are relatively independent. You're hosted, but you're respected. Your free will is respected. So you can invite more help, especially from Galactic Federation. And recently we spoke to Andromedans. Have you spoken to Andromedans? No. So read my book, see the website. We do on a, here on Earth, we have a group of about 100 people and seven of them are very active, discussing what can you do up there will, to help us. I will get to meet someone from the Federation of the Light the next meeting. The next thing is to create an independent human news agency up there independent news that can be hosted by Yale and others but at some point the logic is very simple Hold, bear with me they will have to deal with the United Nations and they will have to expose the crimes against humanity which are many and the best people to do that would be humans in a colony or in a news agency they don't have to release all the negative information at once but some obvious things like chemtrails and crimes against humanity have to be exposed and if it is done by humans that would be most appropriate because aliens would interfere but humans are in a position to help ourselves to expose the crimes against humanity I understand thank you the, my 
topics of conversations are limited. I know, I understand, but you can listen. But I can listen and I can make suggestions. However, that topic does not come up very often. More so, I am there to help them with first contact. So, I am not informing them about anything like that. They already are informed. So, there should and, be a discussion group in the colony where you could advise to Yale, advise to our Arcturians. They are, and they are listening to you. Man. Officially write letters from the colony to the High Council proposing things. I already wrote them, but you didn't read them. So please go to the website, read them, discuss. You have way more information than I do. And write official because you are representatives of the Earth. They're not, <coughs> you're not abductees, you're representatives. So yes. you can do things like inviting consultants, inviting uh, even Christ, Jesus. You can speak to Jesus and ask for his advice. He is active in that. So you have a lot of tools which we don't have, and you're in safety up there. I have to go now. Thank you much. I appreciate your visit. That was great. Thank you. Thank you. I'm back. Hey, Lakesh. Nice. Long time, let's see. I'm only back briefly. Thank you very much for the whole session. The session was great, actually. And thank you for letting James through. And I appreciate all the teaching. That was Nina's doing, gave. not mine. Why Must is it hard for him to come to you? I do not know. Jim's but body is not as healthy. And, you know, younger people maybe have trouble being in it. At least John Lennon had trouble being in it. They they have sometimes pain or something. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. They act like they're in pain sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I have no pain right now. But they, it's perhaps the way it happens. Well, I would think with a big, vast difference in biology and in the the way they are obviously breathing different gases, and there Ooh, must be right. other vast differences. Yes. We're going back and forth here. That was just Jim to talk. Yes. Ooh, we're mixed up here. Okay. I'm back. And you are? I'm the cash. Yeah, something happened. How many of people from the website have been taken so far? Still three? Yes. Mm -hmm. There has been, there has been a um, delay. Right. And there have been many questions because the people that they have taken have been helpful, but not necessarily in the ways that they were assigned to be. Mm -hmm. So um, it is touchy for them to continue to take people from the list at this moment. That doesn't mean they're not going to, but I think they will. But there's something going on there that I'm not understanding. And the decision, was decision not to contact people down on Earth through the holographic projections, right? They are too afraid of doing that, right? It sounded like, like they analyzed and they decided whoever projects is in danger of being hit by you know, mi missiles or something. I'm sorry, Max, we're having trouble here. All right. I'm going to pop out. Thank you much. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Blessings to you all. Blessings. Welcome, Jim. Well, thank you.
<laughs> How did it feel? Mm. The ending there was, there was something wrong there in the ending on the Kesha side. Mm. So I'm not sure what that was. Everybody was tired. You were tired. Well, you were James getting was a little hostile. I? Yeah. Huh? No, no yes. I wasn't. I thought so. No. Oh. No. Okay. I just wanted to carry the message across. You just like persistent messages. Maybe it was a little persistent. I think they perceived it as, um, that's what I was getting anyway, demanding. that it was being perceived as, well, maybe too assertive. Oh, okay. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Was there was something going on there at the yeah. end? So. Yeah. But I feel really good in this vortex. <laughs> 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 good. Yeah. Apparently they have a lot of the Not rules that they're, they just, they're, they're not allowed to talk about some topics. Oh, I know, but I'm saying they're afraid of this. The, the, That's the, why they what they said leave. to Stop. us was the age of secrecy was coming to an end, but there's still a lot of secrets, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> there's still a lot of secrets up there. <laughs> yeah. But um, I'm not sure. They said the time of secrecy was coming to an end, didn't they say that? Yes. But they still have a lot of secrets but they can't tell us here yeah. yeah every time i ra raise the topic about news agency they get you know really upset yeah, that's what it was uh, i'm yeah. sorry but you well, know, I they know, have to answer I that well, i'm just saying that's what it was and that was perfect i mean I they know. never pass it along to james he doesn't right, even read right, the site so right. we write all open letters to aliens and the humans in the colony have access to the internet and don't read the site mm. so they have a support group here which they don't get support up there, uh, their well, issues. Good. Yeah, their issues are probably far more complicated than we can even imagine. Right. Well, and we're yeah. helping them, and they just. I don't confused. think they even know how to address it. Yeah, at I just this confused. point. But I mean, I got the feeling when you were talking about that that he was like fading away. I'm so. sorry. Um, so I don't know about that, but he is his. Oh, I. It was like wow, he had a headache or something. <laughs> he said it was hard. You actually like distressed. He acted very distressful. Yeah. Oh, really? Trust yeah. but distressed. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Distressed. Yeah. As far as I was concerned. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, it's half a year as they are there. You know, I proposed the colonies. I guided them through, and now they kind of cut me off. I feel that you know they might use more advice from me and others on the website. I don't think they cut you off. Do you? Okay. I mean, they are cutting off. Thank you. My letters to the colonies never reached them. Oh. All right, I didn't know that. I mean, they put the barriers here and there. I didn't answer these questions, but I will get in touch with him and answer the questions. I think it makes the most sense to do that in a separate private Yeah, show. this will be a separate. Uh, Lakesh will have to do that separately because this wasn't the format for that. I don't think, so. Yeah. Well, we, as humans, we really need their, uh, like, free energy technology, their healing health issues. Well, technology. I've learned a lot of alien Reiki. Mm -hmm. They've Taka Taka yeah. has uh, taught me some alien Reiki that's not known to Earth. So mm -hmm. I can help with that. She, okay. she taught me a few things, didn't she? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been a recipient. It's amazing. Yeah, it's it's different. It's not it's not like the regular stuff. It's very strong, though. Yeah, it's very like, dense, but a beautiful dense. It's soothing and like a healing balm, but it's an energetic. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a gel yes. energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A gel energy that goes in, and she's experienced it. So. Like it like fills in all any, I don't want to say like holes, but just it feels like it just feels soothes anything that ails you. It's just a beautiful, like, yeah, dense gel like energy. Interesting. Mm. Are they likely to be helping us with other, like what I call technology, like free energy? Um, is that coming in now, or is that going to wait a few more days? The, that technology um, has already been given to somebody. Okay, because it's going to take. They give it to whoever they think should have it. I guess. Yeah, well, it's going to take a few years and millions of dollars to pr start producing. The hardware that we need to do that. Yeah. And meanwhile, I'm sure the oil companies are be trying to block it. Right. So, but they're um, they do give information. 
I'm not really good at giving Max information because I don't know the meanings of the words and stuff that they're trying to tell him. Mm -hmm. so, and sometimes they come to me and say, what word should I use here? And I, I give them the wrong word. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when it comes to DNA. Yes. Um, I know nothing about nothing, yeah. absolutely nothing about it. So we'll have to have a little, you know, Teaching. run through yeah. run through the terminology. So at least you learn the ter yeah, because uh, they're yeah. using the wrong terminology with yeah. them because they're trying to pull it out of me, and I'm like going, at, "Is it that?" I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But but that's kind of the opposite of the Edgar Casey work, where yeah. Casey sometimes couldn't even pronounce the medical terminology right. when he woke up. Yeah. Right. There were terms that he clearly did not have stored up in his head. Yeah, I think they changed it because of that, because he yeah. couldn't, because we can't pronounce it anyway. So they're trying yeah. to use our words now. Yeah, that's another issue about vocabulary. Uh, as they speak through you, mm -hmm. obviously they're from a different language, totally different language than English mm -hmm. or American. They have a translator, but a, a machine? it doesn't have all our. It doesn't have all. <coughs> there's words that don't translate. Yeah. Just like Google. Yeah, it, there's words that don't translate, and so they'll come in and try to find something close. Yeah. So, and that, that, they'll take a phrase that'll mean something close, because some of their words can be a, a sentence to yeah. us. Yeah, so. which comes out all the time in linguistics on our planet. <coughs> on our, the, uh, right. the Eskimos have, I think it's 32 different words to describe snow, because uh -huh. their life depends on snow. Right, exactly. <laughs> We have like two words, you know, wet and dry, or yeah. know, fluffy and soft. <coughs> fluffy and soft. And that's all we but care they about. They have different, they have the hard snow, the soft snow, yeah. the wind swept snow. Yeah. And so, yeah, so just going, you know, a few hundred miles from here, but they, the vocabulary is different. They need the different terminology so they can um, know how to plan for their days. So. Yeah. So when you talk about somebody from a different planet or a different spaceship or something, trying to use our vocabulary. That's got to be a real challenge. Right. Any other questions you have? I, have I, I know a lot. Yes. Yeah. Do you know what prohibits most humans from being telepathic and what can we do to increase that? The telepathy starts in the heart chakra hmm. for most people. But there are some people that it starts in the third eye. So most people. Um, the first thing that happens when people are starting to become telepathic is they feel the intent of another person. Mm -hmm. They can understand good. They know good and evil just by being around somebody. You know, they can sense it. Mm -hmm. And I know there's a lot of people that, um, you know, there's. You're not sure, mm -hmm. but if you, you know, speak a word to them and you can feel their intention, that's the beginnings of telepathy. And um, it starts with the heart chakra. That's what I was told. And, mm -hmm. But there are those that it starts with the, the, the intellect. So I get both. <clears throat> I think it's connected. But, but they are connected. Because the second place it goes is, this, is here. Mm -hmm. so, but for humans, it starts in the heart chakra. For 99% of them. There are a couple of theories. Um, one is um, <coughs> by. Um, Good question. Um, I forgot the word. Dvir, Adrian Dvir. Uh, he's already not with us, but he was talking to Yael and got lots of specific information on telepathy. And his explanation was that telepathy goes from your physical mind to your higher self, basically, spiritual connection. Then your higher self speaks to a higher self of another person, and then her higher self, another person, kind of translates it back to the to the physical mind. That's one thing, and it doesn't um, disagree with what Bashar says. And Bashar says that to become telepathic, you have to become another person. You come to the same frequency, you synchronize, you become one, and mm -hmm. that's you speak mm -hmm. where you speak. That's what Bashar says. So mm -hmm. both explanations make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you can synchronize on heart level, and you can synchronize on on eye level or right. mental level. Another person I know, she is um, uh, an abductee who volunteered to go there, and she's there all 
much of the time uh, speaking to different aliens and they just look at her and she can talk to them right and whenever she looks eye, eye to eye or at least see the faces she can understand if she turns away she immediately loses the connection because she cannot hear them anymore that's exactly right. so mm -hmm. face to face i mean there is one telepathy you know dimension to dimension we can you know some people can from here can communicate to the aliens like channeling and some is face to face, which is involved looking at each other and synchronizing physically. Mm -hmm. So there, there are many kinds. Mm -hmm. um, Yael are very, very telepathic. Uh, they're very advanced, and uh, they measure the telepathy of James and Randall and others in the colony in percent of their telepathy. So how how big percent is? So a typical human is be below three percent. Uh, some talented humans maybe around around maybe 10 and they celebrated first when they reached about 25 percent when this first telepath reached about 25 percent in the colony that was a big celebration they kind of uh, bec were getting through into human mind and understanding how we work most important for them was not the knowledge but the emotion yeah, and Liren say the same. When they spoke to our telepaths, that's changed the whole Liren civilization, how they relate to us. Same with, with the Yale, same with, with Arcturians. Yes. Telepathy has a tendency to cut down on the, the strength of emotions because you don't, want to be, you, you don't want to be assaulting somebody with your thoughts. Do you understand that? I mean, it's like you would assault them if you were feeling a strong emotion and they happen to connect with you. So mm -hmm. it happens, it sort of calms you, your emotions down so they can understand that you're uh, upset or whatever, but it's not like a huge, like what we feel. Mm -hmm. It's not like, ah, so. My objective friend says that uh, one of the arts you get when you get, become telepathic is how to hold of what you want to say. You want to say only what you want to say and not expose the whole uh, mess inside you. So, uh, you know, all telepathic races, right. they kind of learn it from childhood how to uh, communicate well, to speak what you want to say and not anything else. And Yale is especially uh, artful in holding all the information. You still can have lots of secrets. You cannot hide the intention, so intention is immediately seen, but you don't expose the uh, factual information, so they can keep lots of secrets. At some point, this dude was trying to convince, to propose the, the plan of contact to Arcturians, and they didn't trust him. They said, you, if you want to continue, you have to open yourself completely and dissolve in us for a second or something, so we can really see what, what's your inside motives basically unhide everything and for him it was a big personal decision it was I guess first time in your life when you do that maybe you unhide it from your important mate but but not to any other so for him it was like like uh, sacred uh, how do you say exposure exhibitionism that's how it's called it right and but you know when he spoke to me he he realized you know it, it's, it's it's a sacrifice he has to do for humanity and he did it and it wasn't as bad. Mm -hmm. And he also had a glance into Arcturian way of thinking. When he was he visited the console and he had to basically open himself. So it was a big thing for, for them to kind of dissolve in each other. Mm -hmm. Well things have been smoother since then. Once we had a visitor, it, he didn't introduce himself. It was someone, some alien. When I was talking about love, he said he visited and said, What can you understand about love? Love exto is external for you. For us, love is becoming other person. It's complete complete uni unity. Spiritual unity. That's you know that's again you know one of the mm -hmm. facets of of telepathy. <coughs> well all right. Thanks, I Jim. think that's it for now. <laughs> yeah, okay, well thank you so much for coming. Thanks. If you folks want to stick